This is Helping of Happiness, episode number 131. Today we have author Joseph Keeler with us from Red Panda Books, and he's going to teach us how to imagine with our kids and the benefits of reading with our kids and how to make time for that. Hi, I'm Hilary Hess, and you're listening to Helping of Happiness. I'm a Christian mom of seven kids who loves to build memories through eating tasty family recipes and going on fun adventures with my family. On this podcast, I'm introducing you to the light-filled people and ideas who inspire me to be a better mom and help me bring my family closer together and closer to Jesus Christ. I am super excited to introduce our guest today. We have Joseph Keeler from Red Panda Books. He is the author of these incredible children's books, and I cannot wait for you to get to know him and hear his story and all the cool things he's doing. Hey, Joseph. How are you doing? So good. I am pumped about this interview. This is going to be so much fun. Before we get into your books, I do want to hear a little bit about you and your family and what you do. Well, first, before I tell you about me, I just want to congratulate you on your wonderful podcast. I've listened to your podcast. They are fantastic. I love your website. You're doing doing amazing work. So congratulations Thank for you. you. You've done a- 128. That is fantastic. <laughs> and and I, I looked through almost every one to see the different subjects. You, your subjects, the range is wonderful. There's great depth to it. So great job. Thank you. So, so to tell you a little about myself, I was born in Canada. When I was eight, we moved to England and spent a year in England, which was amazing. And I'm not going to go through my whole life, but I wanted to tell those two little things because uh, it uh, makes a difference for what what I'm going to tell you about with the the rest of my life and why I'm uh, writing children's books. I I tell you when we when I was 12 we moved to Utah and became a U.S. citizen. I have my mother's passed away, but she was an absolutely amazing lady and she she had a zest for life and loved books and she would read books to us when we were younger and. And she was somebody that wouldn't just sort of read the story. She gave life to the story. So it really brought the stories to life and the characters to life. And and that's what created such a desire in my heart to read and to want to write books. Uh, my, my mother also had a love for adventure. So even when I was eight years old and my brother was 10, we had two, uh, two younger siblings at the time. She would take us... Um, every probably once a month and and she and my dad would go but my mother was the one that researched everything <laughs> go to he was just along castles. for the ride <laughs> oh my gosh we would go to different castles and ruins and forests and just zoos and everything and she she took us on adventures and and we had so much fun so she she's huge part of my life and all the things that I desire in my life. Well, with her love for travel and her love for adventure, after becoming an attorney, I went to law school and became an attorney. I wanted to travel overseas and I wondered how could I do that and found out about the army and decided to join the army as an attorney. Our first assignment was in Panama, the country of Panama, which was an absolutely amazing assignment. And uh, so The other thing that I've done, I've I've been in the army now for 27 years, which is a long time. That is awesome. Um, That is though I feel very young. (laughs) Um, I'm a judge in the army, and and I preside over criminal trials from whether it's basic theft to the most serious crimes that can happen. But uh, so that's what I'm doing now. I've lived in three different countries. I have an absolutely amazing wife named Lori. We have six great kids, and uh, five of those kids are married, and I have seven grandkids. So I've got just a great, wonderful family and uh, an absolutely wonderful um, feeling about life and a joy of life. So that's a little about me. I love it. It is so much fun. Okay, so I want to hear all about your Red Panda books, what your mission is behind it, and how it all got started. 
So how it all got started, one, I, as I was telling about my mother, she loved children's books. So when we started to have kids, I wanted to read books to them as well. Well, my first assignment in Panama, it, that's, that was a long ways away from the U.S., and it was at a time where there was no internet. And our oldest daughter, when she was turning five, we looked in to see how it would be for her to get to school that was on post, and we ended up, there was no housing on post, so we lived like 30 to 45 minute drive away from post in Panama City. And when we looked at the bus system, the U.S. bus system to take kids to school, our daughter was going to be on the bus for two and a half, two hours going there and coming back with middle grade and high school kids. Mm -hmm. And she was only going to be spending two and a half hours in school. So we thought, ah, that's not going to work. So we actually prayed and thought about, should we do homeschool? And we, we decided to do homeschool. We didn't have any materials. I don't so we, know how you I, did that without the internet. The internet has saved me in our no internet, little no Amazon. Journey. Oh my heavens! So I and you know, as as being an attorney and enjoy writing, so I would I started writing little books and and I'd make little paper books and I I would do little illustrations and that's what we started with basic books for my daughter to read, and and then I thought you know what in the evening I'll I'll tell a bedtime story to my kids or I'll read them some books. And, um, and so I started reading books to them. Well, as my kids started growing up, I, we were looking at one book one time and one of my favorite places to read, and we'll talk about this a little later, is find a place to read that's the same, that really is a special place. It was at, at the, the twins, we have twin boys, uh, a daughter and then twin boys. On their twin bed, uh, bunk bed, I would sit with my back against the bunk bed and I would have what, usually one child in my lap, one on each side, and then the older kids would be looking over my shoulder at this book that I'm reading to them. And one, one time as I was reading a book, I saw this picture of an attic and it had all different type of items in the attic, fun things to point out to the kids. Hey, can you see this? And I saw on a table, there was an old fashioned sailing ship. And I thought, oh my heavens, that would be wonderful to pretend that a captain was on the ship and would take us on the adventure. So I literally stopped reading about the book and I started telling them about the captain on this ship and that we all got on miniature, got on the ship and the ship went out the window and we went on this adventure. And so, then it started that night after night, I would come in and I would tell these stories to my kids about us going up into the attic again and getting on this ship and going on an adventure. And we had so much fun with this. I, I told hundreds of stories that I thought, you know what, I'd love to bring this joy of, of excitement of adventure and reading to the rest of the world. And then I, I wanted to bring this story in a book and that's, that's the foundation of of Captain Pabu and the Buried Treasure. And it's the main character, and I'll tell about the characters a little later, but is a red panda. And so it's, it's an absolutely wonderful story where the parent goes on the adventure with their kids. And so that's kind of the background of the red panda books. So my mission is to inspire parents to read to their children. There's, there are so many benefits when, when a parent reads to their children. And, and it just, it builds so many things. Uh, one of them, the main reason is it really helps the children learn to read. But there's just a benefit of you as a parent reading to their kid, your kids. The second mission is to encourage parents to go on adventures with their kids. So uh, in, on the website that we're going to have, we're going to have different blogs that talk about different activities that you can do with your kids, whether it's go to the zoo, go to an aquarium, go to a park, whatever, just get out and do things with them. And the third is, I absolutely love animals. And we're going to give 10% of all the profits are going to go to the Red Panda Network, which is a network in Nepal that takes care of wild red pandas because red pandas are an endangered species. 
and they do a wonderful job of helping to have an area that's only for the red panda and people don't go in and hunt and do other things, protects them from deforestation. And, and it's just a wonderful, um, great organization to help them out. So those are the three missions of this red panda books and why we're doing this. That is so cool. So tell me why red pandas? What what was it about red pandas that got you so excited? Well, you know, I love going to zoos and every in the army you move all over the place and everywhere we've lived we visited the zoos close to it and even far away from it. Well, one of our assignments was at Montgomery, Alabama and we went drove to Atlanta which is like 3 3 and a half hours away to go to the zoo there. And I remember seeing, we were walking down the path and I remember seeing an absolutely gorgeous animal that I'd never seen before. And so we hurried over to the exhibit and it was a red panda. And they are just the most beautiful animal with white and red and black and their tail is striped and they are so playful and fun. And as I was thinking about the captain of of this adventure i wanted someone that was playful and fun and i thought the the actual red panda and the attitude and playfulness of a real red panda is the kind of character that i would want for captain pavu so that's how i chose the red panda and i don't know if you've ever seen videos of red pandas but they, they are playful they it's like they joke around and and have just such so much fun. They're 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 a blast to watch. So that's why I picked the red panda. Well, you're inspiring me to go jump on YouTube with my kids right when we're done and show them red pandas on there. They love it. We that's one thing during COVID that we've done is we've hopped on the live cams of different zoos and aquariums so they can oh, see the heavens. animals in in real time since we haven't gone everywhere and they love like the baby otters at the monterey bay aquarium yes. or the, so the red pandas that's a really fun idea they would love that there's some really good uh videos at the oregon zoo they have some red pandas there and all there's many zoos that have red pandas in fact that's one of the things we're going to put up on our website is the different zoos you can visit to see red pandas yeah do that they that's they will really laugh cool. they'll have a great time that is super fun I know that we know that it's important to read to our kids, but tell us why it's so important and how often we should be reading to our kids. Well, in 2015, the American Academy of Pediatrics did a study and they issued a policy statement. And in the policy statement, they said more than one in three American children start kindergarten without language skills they need to learn to read. And then the American Academy of Pediatrics said this, reading proficiency by the third grade is the most important predictor of high school graduation and career success. Wow. I'll read that one more time. Reading proficiency by the third grade is the most important predictor of high school graduation and career success. So when I learned about this, I was like, I need to be a part of helping parents and kids, helping parents help their children learn to read. And from 1985, it's a report called Becoming a Nation of Readers. And it's a very thick study. The researchers concluded that the single most important activity for building knowledge for their child's eventual success in reading is reading aloud to children. That's significant. Let me give one other study. I don't want to give too much information, too many facts, but so taking these studies at, the, at Ohio State University, there's a, an, an adjunct professor uh, named Jessica Logan. She's a researcher of uh, educational studies. And she looked into this deeper to find out where children in America were with their reading ability and, and really how many children were in homes where parents read aloud. And she was shocked to find out almost half of the kids in America either are never read to or are read to seldomly, over half. 
And so she thought, you know what? What if we look to see the, the vocabulary or the amount of words that would be read to a child between birth to age five when they would start kindergarten? So obviously, if a parent reads, doesn't read at all to their child, the child will hear no vocabulary words from a book. And let me just stop right here and mention why it's significant to read to them. Do you think about your day-to-day -day interaction with your kids? It's basically, you know, hey, what do you want to eat? Here's the cereal. Grab the milk from the fridge. You know, hey, those clothes don't match. Go put on a different <laughs> shirt. You know, just different things like this. Our vocabulary is very minimal when we interact with our kids. It's about the same every day. But when you pick up a book, there's vocabulary about different subjects. It could be about another country. It could be about science. It could be about um, buildings. Uh, just so many different things and the vocabulary. So when you're reading to your child, it brings a lot richer vocabulary to the discussions you have. And, and you can, I mean, and, and it's amazing how when you're talking about things, when you read through a book, and you're reading about, let's say, different animals. You can then talk about a leopard or a peacock or whatever. Well, where are they from? And then you can research and look up these things, and it builds the vocabulary of your, ch vocabulary of your children. So now listen, we're going back to this study by Jessica Logan. She found out that if, if a parent at least read one, one or two books a week, the child would hear 63,000 words from the age of zero to five. And by the way, 63,000, that's a lot of words. And that's using, so from zero to three, they usually, the, the researchers and most parents usually read what's called a board book. It's one of the thicker books, the thicker pages, and there's usually one or two words on each page. Mainly it's a picture. Which and is actually fantastic for those toddlers that are eating your books and ripping your pages out, right? <laughs> that's exactly right, that are <laughs> chewing on them. Yes, that's <laughs> correct. And then from ages three to five, that's when the, the children's picture books come in where there's more vocabulary. And so when, when Jessica did this research, she was taken into account the board books that don't have many words through the, the children's picture books that have more words. So one or two books a week, you'll read 63,000 words to that child. Fantastic. Well, what if you read every day? If you read a book every day, they will have heard 300,000 words from ages from birth to five years old significant increase in words. Now here's the amazing thing. If a parent reads five books a day, and once again, this is just board books and, and uh, picture books. So this is not extensive books, just reading those simple books five times a day from birth to a child's five, being five years old going into kindergarten. That child would have heard 1.5 million words isn't that incredible? That is and let amazing. Me, let me just give this perspective too. I don't know if you've read the Harry Potter series. Oh yes, we love are, Harry Potter. Those are big books. All of those, those words combined in the Harry Potter series is 1,084,000 words. So wow. you will be reading more words to your children than all of those books combined. And so what, what does that really mean? You think about it. It means your child gains an appreciation of so many different vocabulary words that they would not hear in everyday life. So when they go to school, they are so much more prepared when they learn any type of subject. Plus, they will have an understanding. So when they're learning something, not only will they know the vocabulary words, but they will eagerly learn new vocabulary words because they've already learned so much. Another benefit of, of reading aloud to your children, pedi pediatricians know that when parents read to children, it's a very personal and nurturing experience. It promotes parent-child interaction. It improves and increases 
their social emotional development. Obviously, it improves their language and literary skills. And it's when, when you're reading at that time, their brains are still developing. And so it's improving those literary skills as their brains are developing. And it, 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 it provides so many benefits when a parent reads aloud to their children. And so that's, you know, when you hear all of these studies, you realize how critical it is as a parent to read to their children. I know how busy mothers are and it's so difficult to find a time. One of the things I want to ensure is I'm not saying, hey, mothers, you have this responsibility. This is an important responsibility to pass over to the dads as well and give them an opportunity to read to the children, interact with the children and build a wonderful bond of, of friendship and learning with the dad also with the children. So it provides, reading aloud provides so many incredible benefits. One other thing I wanted to mention is many parents will read to their kids up until the age of kindergarten or maybe first grade when the child starts reading. And then it's like, you know, learn on your own, read on your own. And they forget to keep reading to that child. There's, there's a couple studies that have been done in, in Australia. One in particular that talks about, they, they interviewed thousands of students many of whom were read to as children to a certain age, usually five, and then the parents stopped reading. They were amazed, those that did the study were amazed how many children missed that and missed that important time with their parents where they would go over this fun story and learn. And so, so to your, your wonderful mothers and your listeners out there, keep reading to your children. And if you're not reading to them yet, and I'll, I'll give, I can give some, um, some pointers if you want for me to help them to do this, to read to their children and make yeah. it a consistent fun yeah. time. So let me, let me mention, I've got five great suggestions for you and for your listeners. First, find a special area that has good enough lights that you can read it and the kids can see the pictures, but make this a fun area, whether it's fun um, you know, beanbag chairs or a, a special place on the couch, or maybe, maybe it's in the bedroom you're reading right before they go to sleep, but find a special place and have something fun, whether they, they want to have a, a teddy bear or a toy or something with them, make it a special time and a special area. So first one is have a special area. Second one is have a consistent time. With that, your mothers are so busy. They wear so many different hats and are going all different places. And it's hard to find a time. So for you moms out there, find a time that's good for you. Because you're not going to be able to do it if you find a time that's not good for you. Because you need to be consistent. Often that's first thing in the morning, especially now with all the parents that have to do homeschool. And their school, your kids do school at home. Start out the day together and start out reading aloud to them. They will love that time. Or pick a time, often another great time is right before bed. Because, and I know moms, you're tired. <laughs> but the time- I'm so tired. But that is <laughs> such a good time for us. You know, my, oh, it is. my husband great... usually does those, the picture books with the kids. Cause that's when I feel like we've interacted plenty <laughs> during the day. Yes. Yeah, done interacting. But then after he gets them all tucked in and they do all the fun things together, then I just read the chapter books where it's more them just laying in bed, falling asleep while I'm reading than me putting on a dance and a show because that can be a little hard <laughs> at night. <laughs> That's fantastic. So reading at night is another time that usually the, the mother or the father are able to do it. So even dads that have busy schedules, I know there was a time that oh, I would come, so I, would, too. Yeah. <laughs> I would leave and leave for work at six in the morning. I would come home seven or eight at night and it was just enough time to eat something quickly and go read to them or do something with them. So, but that's a special time that the kids know and they, they love when you're doing it and do it consistently. So have a consistent time. Third thing is, make it a no, no electronic zone. 
So if you really want it to be memorable and fun where you can really get in the stories, nobody has a phone, not you and not your kids. All electronics go aside. And, and it's another piece. When you read to them, read from a regular paper book, especially when they're children. There's something special about them touching the pages and, and looking at the images and turning the pages. It makes it really become a, a special time. So make it a no electronic zone. The fourth suggestion is have a, a variety of books. So go to the library, make it a fun time on Saturday, or that's a great homeschool activity. Go to the library, have your kids pick their favorite books, find books that you love, whether it was a book you loved when you were a young child or one that you found now, because there's some amazing authors out there. And because that will make it more enjoyable for you. My mother, loved the book go dog go and she read it to us all the time and and so honestly that's one of my favorite books and so it's it's a fun thing that every time i see that book it reminds me of my mother and brings back such wonderful memories so that's the fourth suggestion the fifth that i've already talked about a little bit is make so that it's a physical book a paper book that you can read to and that just helps make it a wonderful experience. The last thing I guess, maybe it's number six suggestion is don't <laughs> worry if your kids are active. We had a child that had ADHD and was, just couldn't sit down still. And so we would allow him to either draw or walk around a little bit and, and just get some movement. He had to keep moving. And, but he was listening to the story and, and just so don't worry if they have to do something else. Um, just m remember that reading is important. They'll hear the, the vocabulary words. They'll be in the story, ask some questions, and, and they will definitely stay a part of it. Love those. Those are such good ones. And I'm with you. A paper book is just vastly different than an ebook to me. I, I don't even myself like to read on an ebook that much. I just love to see where I am in the pages and I, I'd love having a book in my hand. So I love that suggestion. So let's hear about some of the characters in your books. I would love to be introduced to some of these playful, fun characters that you have. So uh, with the book, um, you know, as I mentioned with going up into this attic and seeing this ship, so with the book that I've written, it's Captain Pabu and the Buried Treasure. It starts out with, with a hallway and the parents are to pretend it's the hallway in their own home. And a macaw comes flying down the hallway and the kids hear and see the macaw and they go running out into the hallway. When they see the macaw, then they turn and they'll see a ladder going up to an, an attic, a hole in the ceiling and there's an emperor tamarind. So, and oh, I'll mention one more thing. So the emperor tamarind is, is a monkey with the white mustache that goes way past its chin. It is so much fun. And it's waving at, at your children and you to come up into the attic. And so you and the kids go up into the attic and in the attic, there are an assortment of items. So much fun to talk about and to see. And then you see a ship and there's a sailing ship on the table. And you and your kids go over to the ship and on the ship is a captain. And that captain is a red panda and invites you and your kids to go on adventure to help him get his tr this treasure from the pirates. So the main character is Captain Pabu and he's a red panda. And I chose the red panda because they are just so much fun. They're fluffy, they're colorful, they're beautiful. and they when you watch videos of them they are just so playful and the first mate is this emperor tamarind this monkey with this long white mustache and uh, he's involved to help the, the kids and the parents get along the journey he will um show take the kids up to the the crow's nest so they can see far ahead on the ship and then the scarlet macaw is our her name is Scout and she's the lookout and she'll fly ahead and, and 
if there's something to warn about, like the pirate ship ahead, the, the macaw will come back and tell the kids, you know, there's a pirate ship. So those are my three main characters. I've also written it, but I love the books where, you know, when you open up a book, there's like a butterfly on every page or a rabbit or different things that you can find in the book and, and something fun that's the same on every page. So I love frogs, by the way. And so I, I <laughs> we love them over here too. <laughs> I wrote, I had my illustrator who is absolutely amazing draw three different frogs. There's two girl frogs and a boy frog. And on each page, they're doing something fun and crazy. And so, you know, after you go through the book once or twice and go on this adventure, another thing you could do is just look through, find the frogs and laugh about all the different things they're doing. So that's something to, that's fun to find out on every page. Um, so there's frogs in the story. And then the, the, the pirates. I've got a grizzly bear that's Captain Harry Feet, that's the captain pirate. I've got a, a rhino, a crocodile, and a hyena. And they're just so fun and they're drawn so well. And, and anyway, so it's, those are my characters. And obviously, since I mentioned my mission is to help parents read to the children, I've written this book and we've created a website where the parents can go in and buy the book where they will put their name like mom or dad, or I don't know if you have grandparents that are, list, are your listeners, but they can put grandpa Jones or whatever, or grandma Smith or just grandma. And then you write in the kids' names. And so their names are actually put in the book in the, so the whole book as you're reading through it, it's you and your kids going on this adventure together. So you're all part of the story. And it really makes it an interactive and immersive experience for the kids. And that just helps making it, make it so much more enjoyable for parents to read to the kids. That is so cool. Well, and I would love for you to tell, like you walked me through the book, which I cannot wait to get my hands on, by the way. And how the little different suggestions that you have as you're reading through the page, such as when you get to the point where you're looking through the telescope, you tell the kids to pretend to be looking through the telescope. Tell us about some of those cute little parts. So when, when I read my book, go back to my mother. When my mother read books, it was a dynamic adventure every time. So we were going on in the cars and we were wearing the crazy hats and we would do all these things. So I wanted to help mothers and fathers to have some ideas about what to do to make it more enjoyable. And so literally I've given suggestions on almost every page of things they can do. Like when Captain Pabu is getting ready to sail the ship off the table and out the window, He'll, he'll say to one, of, to one of the kids, so I've got a daughter named Aubrey, Aubrey, hoist the anchor or, or you know, bring up the anchor and, and I'll have um, another one, you know, something, I'll tell them something else to do. So, so for example, um, with, with the kids, so I've written, so the captain, Captain Pabu will order, you know, Aubrey, hoist the anchor. Rachel, trim the sails. Uh, ben, pull the lever and let's go get the treasure. And so it's, it's like, and then, and I say to them, pretend to do those actions. So when, I, when I've done it, you know, one kid runs over here and pretends to pull up the anchor. Another kid goes to another area of the house and, you know, pulls the sails so that they're, they're straight and they're ready to get the wind. And, and so, everywhere along there's something to do uh when you when you fly so they sail through the air and then they land in the water and go to this this island called orangutan island and they need to go from the ship to the shore and so they pretend to get in a rowing a, a boat and row the boat to shore and so no kidding the parents and the kids we, we get in we pretend to row to shore <laughs> be a workout so, by the time we're done here First. oh my heavens so you can do you can do as many or as few of these as you want and and it really is so everywhere along it's a joy and then for example when i would tell my kids these stories i one time i thought you know that would be fun if we had uh something to shoot at um the, the pirates or whatever and i thought 
what if we had umbrellas that launched food? And so I, we would come along and I'd say, okay, you know, Aubrey, what are you going to launch? And so she'd say, you know, I'm going to launch a watermelon. And <laughs> one would be a pie. And, and we'd launch all this different food and pretend the, you know, the pirates would catch it and eat it. And, and so in the story, I've included that as part of the story where the orangutans on the island give you and, your, and the kids each an umbrella. And you take the umbrella to go. And that's what you use to fight the pirates with. And you launch different food. And, and so I tell you what, it, it gave us an amazing opportunity to imagine things of different foods. You know, sometimes it's something we ate that day that we were thinking to shoot. Sometimes it was just their favorite food. You know, I shoot popcorn or, you know, all different kinds of things. So it made it so much fun. And so those are the suggestions I put in. Like I said, almost every page has suggestions so that parents have ideas of what to do. If they want it to really be an active adventure, it can be an active adventure. Be as active as you want. <laughs> <laughs> or if they just want to read it quietly and just look at the pictures, the illustrations are absolutely gorgeous. And the parents will just enjoy and the kids will absolutely love the illustrations. I love it. It is so fun. And I think it is just magical that this all stemmed from stories that you just told your kids when they were little and growing up. I think that is so cool that you did that. And especially when you're gone working such long hours that you just take that little snippet and make the best of it right before they go to sleep. I think that's awesome. Well, thank you so much. Okay. So we've got to tell everybody where we can find you. Where can we get these books? Okay, so our website that we're just finishing up now, it's called redpandabooks.com. So redpandabooks.com, and that's where they can go on to order a book. We're all, we are also doing blogs almost every week that have different ideas that parents can do with their kids. We're making coloring pages of red pandas so that you could print them off and, and color with your kids. We'll be giving other ideas of different adventures that parents can go on. So we're trying to make it a website that, that is something that parents can go to. We'll probably have videos on there. We'll look through and find some of the best Red Panda videos and just have the, the URL on it so that the parents can and kids can go there and see just some absolutely fun Red Pandas. Also on Instagram, we're found on red underscore panda underscore books. So red underscore panda underscore books. And then on Pinterest, it's red panda books. And I'll link up to all of these in the show notes. So our friends okay. listening can just go straight there in a click. So they won't even have to remember all the underscores or anything. We'll just slip <laughs> it right in there so they can get right there. So this is so exciting. I love adventuring with my kids and imagining. So this, I'm so excited about this. This is going to be so great. And I love, well, thank you so much. I love that you're teaching parents how to do this. If they don't feel like that's one of their strengths, that this is something, this is a skill they can develop and you don't have to be the best at it. You can just, you sit there and try and you, everybody has their kids for a reason. I feel like, and you're the parent that your kids need. And I love that you're teaching parents that's, how to do that. that. That's exactly right. In fact, one of, we've had some, I had a professional photographer take some pictures with the book and with kids and parents. And so these, these model, well, these families that she went to, not really models, they're just regular families. Um, these families that she had um, hold the book, look at the book, they started looking through it. And there was one mom that said, oh, my heavens, I absolutely love these suggestions. I never know what to do when I'm reading a book to kids. And so for her, those ideas and suggestions really blessed her. And I, I've made this book so it's got several levels to it so that um, you can do many things, whether it's go up into the attic and have point out and have kids search for all the different items in the attic or on the different pages that we've really spent a lot of time to to put in or differences between the first time you see the attic and the last time you see the attic so 
this is a book that you can look at and has so many different levels that you'll have an absolute blast with your kids. So, so much fun. Before we transition to our helpful and happy questions, is there anything else that you wanted to share? Well, I tell you what, the, the main thing I'd like to share is to all those mothers who are listening to your podcast, I just want to say to you, I have been blessed with so many amazing women in my life, my mother, my wife, my daughters, the spouses of my boys, and so many, I've got an amazing sister. They have enriched my life so much. You ladies are amazing. I just want to give a shout out to all of you and tell you, you are doing a wonderful job. I know you ladies are like amazing, but when you look at yourself, you don't think you are. Let me tell you, you are amazing. And so I just want to thank each one of the women that are listening to your podcast, thank you for being who you are. Just being a wonderful woman is amazing in itself, but then you do so much more as you're a wife, a mother, a sister, you know, and so much. So thank you. I, I just wanted to tell your audience that. Well, and thank you, because I don't think there's any mom or woman that could ever hear that enough. So that is really, really wonderful to hear. Thank you. So to finish off, I always throw these three helpful and happy questions into the podcast because this ties in with the Helping of Happiness blog. We love to bring extra happiness into our family through family recipes and through traveling and with any added helpful homemaking hacks or family tips to help our family be a little bit better. So if you could help us out with some dinner ideas or just a food that would be really fun for us to feed our families. What's your favorite food or milk? You know, I'm a pretty basic guy and I had, to, I worked on my uncle's farm for the longest time. So I'm really a meat and potatoes person. Oh, sounds good to me. So I, I love that. My favorite food is probably popcorn. Ooh, so popcorn. That's if, fun. If, if you get the old popcorn makers that have the, where you put oil in and you have it turn and it'll pop, pop the popcorn. That makes the absolute best popcorn better than the microwave popcorn. And I just, I just love popcorn. So are you a gourmet popcorn guy? Do you like all the sugary things on there? Or you just like some good salt and butter on your popcorn? Good salt and butter. I, I mean, I'll enjoy some of those others, but I'm a, a salt and butter guy. Man, you're making guy. me hungry for popcorn. I think I need to bust out some popcorn tonight. <laughs> that sounds good. <laughs> okay, what is the best trip you've ever gone on or your dream vacation? And you've been all over the world, so this is quite the question. Yeah, I tell you, um, we've been blessed that we've been, we really have been all over the world. So for the simple experiences, I absolutely love going to zoos and, and just finding it, going and finding the red panda and looking at the red panda, finding the penguins and the otters and just enjoying it and learning about them and making it a fun adventure. For the bigger adventures, I love Europe. We've been to many countries in Europe. I won't go through and list them all. A couple of my favorites are Switzerland, Germany and Scotland and uh, we've we've spent you know that's one of the blessings of being in the military we lived in Germany actually for six years and so we were able to travel quite a bit there's there's so much out there for people to enjoy one of the think the, the best parts about it too is to realize there are good people everywhere there are moms and dads that just are trying to raise their families do the right thing and it really gives you a wonderful sense that there's a lot of good in this world. I love that. Well, all those places are on my bucket list for sure. Maybe someday travel will happen again. When we're done with all of our That's cars, right. Right. For now, we'll just have to have our adventures with our books in our house. So will you tell us, do you have a homemaking hack for us? So let me just mention this sometimes we get carried away and want to make this big spectacular activity and we forget that sometimes the most simple things are some of the most enjoyable my son adam who you know who he is he and his son went outside and built a village they had little sticks and little stones they looked for different items and built a little village and had a blast 
I would do those kind of things with my kids. And it's so simple and yet it makes an amazing time. So I would say parents, mothers especially, you don't have to hit a home run and make it the most extravagant experience. Sometimes the simple things touch the hearts and make it just an amazing experience. I love that. That's the best kind of tip. That was awesome. Thank you. Well, I could just talk to you all day. I love hearing all your creative ideas and the fun things that you're putting out in the world. Cause I think we're always just looking for something great to do with our kids. And I love all your, all your studies that you read about reading so that we can understand how important this is. So thank you for spending oh, time I, to talk with us. Oh yeah, good. Could I mention one last thing? Of course. So if, if, if there's a parent that's, don't be discouraged if you're not reading enough right now. Don't worry about the past. Just start today and, and work on those, those tips that I gave you and just start now. I tell you, it's, it's amazing how much they'll learn. If, if, you're, if your child's in third grade and their reading skills aren't great, start reading to them. And you know what? As you go through this year, and especially with all this COVID and kids doing online, a lot of mothers are worried about their kids and school. If you will just read to them and have them read, they will have a foundation to be successful, even with all of this other stuff going on. So moms, don't stress. Go to the library, get some books, and read to your kids, and they'll be just fine. I love that. Well, and I loved, we were talking before we got on the podcast about this, I think, but talking more about reading to your kids, even after they were five. And it made me think, my, I have this 12-year-old son who doesn't have to go to bed at the same time with the little kids that I'm usually reading to. But he always asks me, okay, are you going to go read right now? And he'll sneak up and he just sits right next to me while I'm reading to the little kids because he loves to hear the stories that I'm reading the young kids. And I think that it, it really shows that, you know, even though he's older, he's almost about to enter in those teen years, he still loves to be read to. And it's just such a joy that he still thinks that that's great. And I, and I'm glad that he told me that he wants to. So I remember to include my big kids because I forget. Yes. And, and they will love the experience. By the way, if it's a parent who hasn't read anything yet, realize it's going to be a little rocky as you yeah. start reading with them. So there's going to be a little rough time. Just keep going through it. And then they're just going to enjoy it. Pick books that, that, that are fun and, uh, and, and books that they you really love. I love that tip. I actually have one shelf and downstairs on our bookcase. And I'm like, you can pick from any of these books. I know you <laughs> love all those other books and that's great. But if I'm reading to you, these are the ones that you should pick from that I love the most. And that's it, it fantastic. really makes me want to read to them more than just something they pick up that I'm like, oh no, not that one again. That is exactly right. Well, well, thank, thank you, you so much. This was so great. Thank you so much. Joseph is amazing. I'm so glad that he made a little time to spend with us so that we could have him t talk to us on our podcast this week. If you enjoyed this episode, please share it with a friend. We would love a rating and a review on your podcast app that you're using. And subscribe if you don't want to miss another episode. Have a great week.